Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt and today's project is a sweet 2D needle felting tutorial that we call Grazy Days. This is a wonderful beginner friendly 2D needle felting project. I am just in love with little folk art landscapes and layered landscapes. So those ideas come together for this sweet little piece. Together, we will transfer the design onto your background. We're needle felting on linen fabric. We will fill in all the major areas with color and together we will do the outlines, the highlights and the shadows that really give this piece personality. Our little house is sitting on a hill where the shepherd lives who takes care of these darling little sheep. They're so easy to put into place as are the darling poppies right up front. This project can be completed in an afternoon and it looks so sweet framed. We also think it would make a great gift and great greeting card. Today I'm needle felting with wool batting Maori and Bergchef. Here's a look at the colors and we have the complete list provided for you. Pull together your basic supplies and you can see the list in the PDF down below. Use the iron-on transfer pen to trace over your image. Place the mat over your image and outline it with your pencil. Cut out the rectangle for your image so you can center it on your fabric. Lay it face down on your linen and use a hot dry iron to complete the image transfer. See the complete instructions in the PDF. I'm going to tape my mat down so that I have a frame to work within. If you don't like that, you can trace around the inner rectangle and then remove the mat using your pencil line as your guide. If taping down your mat, flip it upside down so the top stays pretty. Run your tape along the perimeter and leave the inside free. We'll use this to tuck our wool under and ensure we get a clean, non-bulky line around our perimeter. I like to plan my color scheme by laying out a little tuft of each color on top of my picture and then just move the whole thing aside while I work. Pull off a tuft of wool wide enough to cover your sky. Tear out the parts for the peaks of those mountains. It's helpful to start tracing around the outlines of your mountains and hills first. This will grab that tapered fiber so it's not too thick. Start there and push all the excess towards the perimeter. Needle felt uniformly up towards the mat. I like to use a cluster of 42 triangle needles to really compact the area and make it nice and even. Mine has four needles. Needle felt it flat. Tear off the excess from the perimeter If you have any areas that are a little bit thin, use the wool you plucked off the edges and fill it in. Needle felt this area smooth. Tuck a tiny bit under the edge of your frame using something flat, like the end of your tweezers. Fill in all of the areas with solid colors of wool, but leave the house blank until all those hills are filled in. As you're working on your picture, wherever the fiber meets the edge of the mat, just tuck those little bits right underneath. Needle felt along the perimeter for a nice clean edge. Needle felt a solid color in each outlined area from the top to the bottom of your picture. We're going to outline each shape with our darkest color. It could even be black, but this is a very dark gray. And we do this first so that when we add the highlights, this gets a little bit muted and doesn't look so strong. If you want it to be very strong, do it last. Start each line by drafting out a very thin piece of fiber. Anchor the tip of that fiber where two lines meet using a fine needle and draft the fiber out 
as you work along the edge of the shape, tacking it down with your felting needle as you go. Break the end of each line by holding pressure with your opposite hand. If your line looks too thick, you can go back over it with a slightly coarser needle. So in this case, I could use my 40 triangle instead of my 42. But again, all the highlights are going to mute those lines a little bit and soften them. If the fiber that you're using has a longer staple length than mine and tearing is not possible, just cut it. Once all of the solid areas are outlined, now it's time to add our highlights. For the highlight on this farthest mountain, we're going to use the lightest brown that we haven't brought in yet. And you can pull off a thin piece of your batting, very, very thin, and then just stretch it right over the top of that mountain and see if that lightens it enough for you. To highlight this mountain, we're going to use we can use the same color or we can use the brown of its neighbor mountain. Those two together will also give you a nice highlight. Just place those two together and stack and pull and stack and pull. Pull off a very thin layer and just ghost it on the mountain. That's just gonna give you a little bit of variation in the face of the mountain. Let's tuck that down before we move on to our hills. You might decide where the source of your light is. In our picture, all of these hills are higher on top and the sun is just gonna be softly hitting those hills and the face of our house. So we're just gonna put a little sun shiny on each of these little hilltops. To do that, for this dark green hill here, we're going to use the green from its neighbor hill that's lighter in shade. Take a small tuft spread it out so that it's just a little web, just like we did on the mountains, but this one's gonna be a little easier to see. And then tack it down with a fine felting needle. If you use a fine felting needle, it will keep the wool from making deep pokes and stretching too tight. This will allow it to lay in that web form right on top of your hill. And just follow the arch. For these two hills, we're actually going to use this very pale yellow, a little more subtle on this hill, a little more obvious on this one. And it's okay if it's a little splotchy, like grasses might be or flowers might be in the fields, but you don't want dots and polka dots per se. We have our light yellow in place here, and we're going to put a little field of flowers on this hill. For our flowers, we're using a pinch of this bright orange and a pinch of this yellowy orange color. Blend the two together, make a tiny little bat there, and then we'll stretch this out just like we did our highlights. These would be like low growing or distant wildflowers. It can be very helpful to lay your fibers out in little ghost layers like this before tacking them down and step back and make sure they look like you want them to before you poke them in. Here you can kind of see a little ridge where we've laid our fibers down. So before tacking them down, just loosen them up right along that area and spread them out with your felting needle. For the highlights for this hill, we're going to use this green, and then we'll tack everything down. Once you're happy with all of your highlighted areas and your little wildflowers, just tack it all in place with your felting needle. The sun in our picture is shining on the face of our house, so we will add a little bit of that same very light yellow right on the part of this hill going up towards the front of the house. And then over here, we're going to need a little bit of shadow. So we'll bring in our very light brown and blend it with this grass color, which is a nice light sage. 
So as the sun is coming here, that shadow is gonna be sort of back at an angle, and you can just use this corner of the house to guide it backwards like that. Tack down along what will be that shadow line, and then you can just guide these fibers back. It doesn't have to be super sharp, but it should be at somewhat of an angle. And if it's too dark, then we can go back over it with another tiny patch of the sage. And that will soften it just by putting a little bit of sage right again over the top. We're going to add shadows where all of these hills dip. And for the, this furthest green hill, we're going to use the darkest green that we've included in our wool pack. Pull off a tiny bit and really anchor the point right where those hills meet. And then just tear the fibers off, trailing along the arch. Start needle felting in the lowest point of the hill. If it seems too dark, instead of putting that color on by itself, you can blend it with the color that's already in the hill. When shading the valleys of each hill, try using the color of the hill just above it. You can use it as a solid or you can blend the two together. For shading this grassy hill with the wildflowers on top, I'm going to use the wool from the hill below it because it's darker. So try that in your picture as well. You can lay your fiber down in the shape of the house and follow those lines. If that's challenging, you might cut your house out of paper and fold it so you have just the shapes you need and you can use them as a little guideline or template to needle felt around and guide your fiber towards. For the shadow on the side of the house here, we're going to use some white, some blue in the sky just to tone it down, and then we'll touch in a little bit of this grass underneath to just kind of mute it. If you prefer, you can try white and gray, but blue is a little more lively. Now we're gonna add our roof. We're gonna start with a solid color of this orangey yellow. Let's first do our roof line along the front. For the side panel of this roof here, we're going to use the same orange and our lightest brown. Shade the side of the roof so that you're happy with it. Remember that the front is getting the sun and then just tuck those extra fibers underneath the mat. Use one of your darker browns to trim the outline of the house along the edges and under the eaves of the roof.
To put in our door, use a tiny pinch of the lightest brown, anchor it along the bottom line of the house, and then draft it up forming that rectangle. If you're happy with your picture, you can stop here or you can add any additional details such as a window or a chimney or maybe even flowers along the edge. We're going to add some sheep on the hillsides and some flowers in the foreground. To needle felt little sheeps on the hill, I like to first blob down little bits of white and get the general placement. Tack each down lightly and then just step back and see if you like where they are. If not, pick one up and move it. Once they're all in place, you can add a little extra fiber where needed so that they look a solid white. Use a small dab of black or your darkest gray and make a little dot for the face or head of each sheep. A thin layer of black along the bottom of the sheep will help ground them to the ground and cast a bit of shadow. To plant our little field of flowers down here, I like to start by putting in all the stems. Pick the color for your stems, draft it out into a long, thin piece, slightly roll it between your fingers, and then cut off a variety of lengths so that you can begin working with them. Needle felt them down. I like to start at the top, usually, and work my way towards the bottom. Be sure to let some overlap. You can always go back and add in stems later as well, but give yourself a good foundation to start from. For our flowers, I'm choosing red, and just like our sheep, we're going to pull off some little tufts and plop them where we want the flowers to be. You can put some where there are not stems already, and they can be spilling off the edge of the picture as well. When shaping your flower heads, if instead of making them all round, you allow some to have a rounded edge and some to have a flat edge, it's going to allow you to play with what direction they're pointing and break up it being too similar to monotonous. Then take your dark fiber, There's, in this case we're going to use our darkest gray, plop some down and just go flower by flower and tack it down in the middle. And that will help you break up the direction that the flowers are facing. Remember, they don't have to be perfect and they are going to be in perspective. So they're going to have a flat edge and a rounded edge perhaps. Maybe you won't see all of it. Wherever two flowers overlap, pick one to be in front and then put a thin line of dark fiber in between the two flowers where they join. You can also put dark underneath any of the flower heads to give it a little more dimension. Go over your entire picture and smooth out any areas that need to be flattened down, clean up any lines that you wanna clean up and just spend a few minutes defining each little part so that you're completely happy with it. Some people like the raw edges on their image and honestly, if you like this, you could display it just like this. On these top edges, it's more clean where you can see what it looks like if you were to fold them in instead of do the tuck under. But we're going to be matting ours and putting them in a frame so it's all going to be covered up anyway. Before matting yours, if you would like to give it a steam press, now's the time to do that. Display your picture any way that makes you smile. We chose this simple frame on top of our mat and removed the glass so that all of the charm can just come spilling right out of the frame. 
Little landscapes like this are so fun and easy to make, and you can really add any personality or details that you like. You might add some clouds, some little flowers, maybe even trees. You might not have sheep, maybe you'll have cows in the field. Whatever it is, we hope you have a great time making them, and we do hope you'll share your finished piece in our group, Living Felt Friends, on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us for this project. If you enjoyed it and would like more 2D needle felting, check out this next video right here. And if you're looking for something a little more advanced, maybe even like this beautiful ocean scene behind me, visit feltingtutorials.com and check out the great classes we have for you.